All right, this video is going to go over 12.2a, which is simplifying radicals, which is like roots and stuff. So uh, before we get started, though, there's a couple things you're going to need to know. Imagine you saw something like um, the fifth root of x to the sixth power, okay? What you need to realize is there's six x's in there, right? Well, this five tells you you need five of them in order to make an X outside of that root. And then there's just one left over. Okay, this is going to be very, very important to understand. So like, let's do another, like if it was like the cube root of Y to the seven. There's seven Y's in there. All right. In order to make a Y outside, you need three. So here's one Y outside. Here's another Y outside. So now it's Y squared outside. And then left over in that cube root is just one Y. All right. So you're definitely going to need to know that. Now, the other thing that you're going to need to know is how to break down um, a number. Like, let's do 32. 32 is 16 times 2, and 16 is 8 times 2, and 8 is 4 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2, and 2 is 1 times 2. Notice how I did this all the way until I got to a 1 here, all right? So why this is so important, how many 2s are there? Five of them. So 32 is 2 to the 5th. Let's do another, let's do like 81. 81 is 27 times three. 27 is nine times three. Nine is three times three. And three is one times three. So 81 is the same thing as three to the fourth power. This is very important to understand. Okay, let's look at some examples. Um, this right here is just telling you like what five squared four cubed looks like if you wrote it all out and kind of going the reverse way, like cube root of 64 being four. Let's just keep moving. All right, an odd root of a negative number will be negative. The even root of a negative number results in imaginary solutions. So like you can totally do an odd root of a negative number, but if you do an even root of a negative number, you're gonna have some imaginary. So let me show you what this looks like. All right, cube root of negative 64. This is like gonna look like exactly what I just did over here. So I'd be like, okay, negative 64. Negative 64 is negative 32 times 2. And negative 32 is negative 16 times 2. And negative 16 is negative 8 times 2. Negative 8 is negative 4 times 2. Negative 4 is negative 2 times 2. And negative 2 is 1 times, well, let's go negative 1 times 2. And then 1 times negative 1. All right, so this right here, is two to the six times negative one. Or it's also the same thing as four cubed times negative one. I don't really know how to, how else I can explain like how I got to green here. Um, basically you can square this number and half this exponent I don't know if that's going to make much sense to you, but this right here, the cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. Because negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 makes negative 64. Okay, now this next one. Uh, fifth root of negative 32. If you broke down 32, we'll just do it as a positive. You're looking at 16 times 2, 8, 4, 
two, one. So 32 is two to the fifth power, all right? So negative 32 is negative two to the fifth power. So the fifth root of it's just negative two. All right, let's keep moving. I know some of y'all are already confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> these are hard to explain. You really just have to know these numbers, like 32 is two to the five. I don't know. Okay, negative root 25. If I saw this problem, if I see an even root, remember, if there's not a number here, it's a two. So if I see an even root, the first thing I do if it's negative is I'll take the i out. So now it's i root 25, which is the square root of 25 is just 5. So this becomes 5i. Five 5i okay, the fourth root of negative 16. First of all, I, I'd probably break down 16. So 16 is 8 times 2. 8 is 4 times 2. 4 is 2 times 2. And 2 is 1 times 2. So 16 is 2 to the 4th. Okay, now if I was approaching this root of negative 16 though, the first thing, uh, f sorry, fourth root, the first thing I would do is I would take the i out and call it the fourth root of positive 16, which we just found out was two. So this becomes two i. Okay, the square root of 36 x eight. Now for this, handle the root first. The square root of 36 is 6. And then x8, if you have a variable with an exponent like that, you're going to divide these things. So it's going to be like x to the 8 divided by 2, which is x to the 4. So my answer here is 6x4. All right, this next one. Fifth root of 32, I would break down first. So remember, it goes like this. 32 is 16 times 2. 16 is 8 times 2, 8 is 4 times 2, 4 is 2 times 2, and 2 is 1 times 2. So this makes it 2 to the 5th, okay? So that means the 5th root of 32 is 2. That's this part right here. Now the other parts, like the x10, remember you're dividing these, so it's like x10 divided by 5, y15 divided by 5. So you're going to get x2, y3, just like that. Okay, this next one, the cube root of 125. 125 is 25 times 5, and 25 is 5 times 5, and 5 is 1 times 5. So 5 cubed is 125, meaning the cube root of 125 is 5. Now the a, it would just be a to the 6 divided by 3, which is a squared. Okay, let's keep moving. Root 50 a 7 b 8. Okay, it's not always going to work out nice with these roots. So like root 50. Let me see if I want to show you that way or the other way. Let's look at it like I've been showing you. 50 is, let's do it as first as 25 times 2. And 25 is 5 times 5. And 5 is 1 times 5. So it's really like 5 times 5 times 2. Okay. And so you could basically think of it as root 50 is 5 root 2. Because remember, this is a root. So this is 5 root 2 right here. Now, the a7, b8 part, think of it like this. You got seven a's here. And this goes back to what I showed you at the beginning. It takes two to write a letter A outside. So I've got one group, two group, three group with one left over. So I could call this A cubed square root A. And then the B8, since it's nice, um, it divides nicely. B to the eight divided by two is B4. So when I put all this together, my answer looks like this. I had a five root two. I had a cubed root a, and I had b4. So it's got a 5, a cubed, b4 outside of the root, 
and in the root, it's got a two and an A. This would be my answer. Now, if you didn't like breaking it down this way, which honestly on ones that aren't that uh, perfect, I don't like doing that. You can also think of it as root 50 is root 25 times root two and root 25 is five. So five root two. This is how I usually do it. It's just hard for some people to see like the perfect square, especially when it's like fourth degree. It's hard to see like perfect fourths. I know that sounds weird. Okay, let's keep moving. Next one. Okay, number nine, the cube root of 128x8. Well, let's break down 128 first. 128 is 64 times two. 64 is 32 times two. 32 is 16 times two. 16 is eight times two. Eight is four times two. Four is two times two, and two is one times two. So 128 is two to the seventh power, all right? So if you're doing like a cube root of that, I guess that's how I could have described it on this other one. We had, um, eh, I'm just gonna keep going. All right, so it's really like this, cube root of two to the seventh, x to the eight. So you need, remember you need groups of three to take like the letter x out. So it's gonna work like this. If there's seven twos in there, I can make two of them on the outside with one left over. And if there's eight X's, eight divided by three is two. So I can take two X's out and there's two left over. So my final answer here would look like this. It would have two squared, which is four. X squared, that's the stuff outside of this cube root. And what's left in it, it was a two and an X squared. All right, let's just keep moving. 162a to the fifth. 162, let's break this down. 162 is 81 times two. 81 is 27 times three. 27 is nine times three. Nine is three times three. And three is one times three. So it's like two to the one times three to the four, all right? Okay, so I need four to take anything out. I've got four threes in there, so I can take a three out and it's basically gone from inside that root. Um, I did not touch that two though. It's still sitting there. Right, and then the A5, I've got five of them. I only need four to take an A out, so I can take one out with one left over. So my answer would be, 3a, you could put a1 if you want, and then the fourth root of 2a, you could put the ones if you wanted. Doesn't really matter. Okay, now on number 14, I think they're missing a parentheses. All right, so basically you can think of it as just an, ignore all this other stuff in there. What if it was the letter a? You would need three pieces to take one out, right? Well, you have three pieces. So essentially what happens is these guys just kind of cancel each other and it just drops the 2x plus 3y. All right, these last ones. Square root of 4x to the power of 6. All right, well, handle the 4 first. You know what the square root of 4 is. It's 2. And then you basically need two groups to take a letter out. So I have six of them. So six divided by two is three. I could take three X's out of that answer. And if you wanna put the one by the two, that's fine too. Okay, the next one, the square root of nine is three. I need groups of two to take a letter out. So X four, I could take out two groups. Y two, I could only take out one group and there would be nothing left over in the root. Okay, the next one, I need three groups to take a letter out. I have three A's, so I can take an A out. I have six B's, so I can take two B's out with nothing left over. And then this last one, I need four to take a letter out. So I have four X's, I can take one of those out. And I have eight Y's, I could take two of those out and then I'd be done. And let's do a quick hypothetical just to kind of reinforce this. Let's imagine this had said Y9. 
So I could have still taken one X out. I could have taken two Y's out, but I would have a leftover Y1 in there. All right, see the difference? I don't know. This is very difficult to explain. So hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. Hopefully this video helped.